Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what I read in December 2020. Let's get started. You may notice one or two things that are slightly different. No longer am I the uncultured swine of before. No longer am I trash, vulgar, unobedient. No longer am I unladylike. No longer do I curse and swear like a sailor. No, you have met a new version of me, a better version of me, a version of me that has nice things and shows those nice things off in nice ways. That's who I am now. No more will I <laughs> call people turds on the internet. That's not me. <laughs> who am I actually fucking kidding? I will never change in a million fucking years. However, I did get a fancy new setup type thing. Um, I reorganized and moved my bookcases, so they are now in this corner. I got a new beautiful chair from Ikea. It's gorgeous. Look at this color. Isn't this yellow just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your entire life? It's so pretty, so comfortable. I also have like a footrest, which is so fancy. I got a new lighting setup. So I am no longer constrained by the hours of sunlight. Isn't that wonderful? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of all of this. If there are things that I could improve or if it's like literally perfect. And I think I know which one you're going to say. It's literally perfect. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of December. I'm a little bit late in filming this and by a little bit, I mean a lot. It's I think the ninth today and <laughs> December ended, uh, I think nine days ago. Yeah, nine days. I didn't film this. I meant to, but I don't know. I was just like in a mood. I didn't really feel like filming anything. I didn't want to be in front of the camera. I was just like uninspired, you know, here I am today doing this. And we're gonna have fun. It's gonna be great. It's the last wrap up of 2020, even though now it's 2021. And based on everything that's happened in the world, I don't see things going differently. Let's get fucking started. If you're new to my wrap ups, what happens is I talk about the books in order from least favorite to most favorite. So in December, I read a total of 13 things. Now, the six of those things were manga just so you know. But the rest of them were horror-ish novels. So I'm gonna talk about the manga separately at the end of the video. That way, if you don't really care, you're not really interested, you can just like stop at that point. But let's talk about some creepy shit. So my least favorite book of the month was for sure Pen Pal. I don't know where my copy is. It's gotta be here somewhere. I just literally can't find it. And I literally actually just don't even care because of how much I didn't dislike Pen Pal, but I didn't think it was that special either. Like, I don't understand why everyone freaks out about it or likes it so much. Like, I don't get it. Pen Pal is basically about this guy who is reflecting on his life and his childhood, and very slowly he comes to certain realizations. I think it does work as a novel. I think had they restructured it and maybe edited it a little bit differently. I think it could have really worked as a novel, but I think as it was, was okay. The writing style is really, really simplistic. The characters are really, really shallow, very two-dimensional, and the plot itself I felt was like obvious from I think the first or second like story. Oh, this is like obviously where it's going. Like Duh. I don't have that much to say about it because I just felt very like meh about the whole thing. I thought, I thought it was like Monday fucking morning, dude. Like it was fine. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. But I, I would never ever again read it. I think I'm actually just gonna like g give away my copy or donate it or do something with it. Cause, Cause it was like whatever. What I did actually like about it though, while I'm, while we're here, was the audiobook which I think somebody on YouTube recorded themselves reading the book and it's done really, really well. I will try to link it in the description if you're interested. The only problem for me was the actual book. <laughs> Next, let's talk about Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This is a YA horror novel following a girl 
named Mila. She's an orphan. She is moving to this new place. She's just turned 18. She's gonna work there. She's gonna live there. She's really looking forward to it. And when she gets there, she realizes that the place is haunted and that things from her own past are gonna come back and haunt her as well. This isn't a horror novel, like, at all. I don't know why it's claimed to be like a ghost story because it's not really a ghost story. It's like a horror movie that is like pretentious and like all of the monsters and all of the ghosts are just symbolism for different things like trauma or their parents or whatever. It's like one of those books. It's like a literary fiction horror novel. It's more of like a mystery novel mixed with like highbrow YA fiction. Besides that, I thought it was okay. I liked it. The reading experience was interesting. I felt myself being compelled to keep reading it to know what was going to happen. I related in some ways to the main character. I thought the portrayal of her trauma and how it like manifested and how she was dealing with it and coping with it was really, really interesting and something that I think a lot of people could relate to. Other characters as well were super interesting. I was fascinated by the whole thing. As for the plot though, I don't really remember there being one. What's interesting about this book is the characters. The plot takes a backseat to the characters and the plot basically just comes out at the end to resolve itself and then you're like, cool, <laughs> I guess, thanks. Overall, I, th I liked it. It was okay. Would I sit down every single year and reread this? Absolutely not. Do I think it's special? Absolutely not. Do I think you should read it? If you want to. <laughs> it was fine for what it is. So I had trouble deciding if I disliked Watch Over Me or this next book more. And that is The Bright Lands by John Fram. Not that I disliked either of them. I was just trying to decide which one I liked the least. This for me was very mediocre. So this is a psychological thriller novel set in Texas with uh, LGBTQ plus themes. Before going into this book, I was so, so, so excited to read it. I could not wait to read this book. I thought it was going to be exactly what I needed in my life. And in some ways it was. In some ways, I loved it because you don't see books like this like in the thriller genre very often. And if you do, usually they're like cheesy and they're not good. So I will give it props for that. However, the book itself is lacking in several areas. At least that's what I found. What I liked about this book was how engaging the murder mystery plot of it was. I felt completely engaged, completely compelled to keep reading to know exactly what was going to happen, which is what you want in a thriller slash mystery novel. I loved the LGBTQ plus themes in this book. I liked our main character. Overall, I think this is an okay read. I don't think it's perfect though. My issue with this personally is just that the characters at some points feel underdeveloped and feel sort of cardboard boxy. There are aspects of the plot that don't make a lot of sense. There are aspects of the plot that have been added that don't add, I think, what the author intended them to. There's a whole like supernatural subplot type thing that just feels very weird and strange in this book. But going into it and reading it, you think it's going to be very much grounded in reality but the author adds these weird parts of supernatural paranormal things. For me those parts were a bit jarring and I kept forgetting that it was meant to be part of the plot and so I had to keep reminding myself and like I said the characters feel underdeveloped, they feel a bit two-dimensional at some points. The main character I really, really enjoyed. His female counterpart, the other main character, just feels like a stand-in. Like literally anyone could have taken that part and ran with it. Like she could have literally been anyone. So to me, certain characters don't feel as lifelike as others. I enjoyed the mystery. I enjoyed the plot for the most part. <laughs> and I enjoyed some of the characters but there are certain aspects to this, certain parts of it 
that I just didn't like or I just didn't get or I just didn't think were well enough developed for me to fully, fully love it. Next, I have my Patreon book club pick for December. If you want to join the Patreon, it's $5 a month and then we go up from there and you can get personalized book recommendation videos from me. You can get book packages from me. You, you can join our book club where we read books and then talk about it. Uh, and in December, we wrote, we wrote, in December, we read Naomi's Room by Jonathan Acliff, Acliff. Some people in the book club didn't like this at all. And I get it. Like, I get it. But I did like it. Basically, we're following a man and his wife, their struggle after their young daughter is uh, kidnapped and then murdered. Soon after she's murdered, they realize that their home might be haunted. One of the main things that I really, really like about this book is how for most of the book, you are completely drawn into it. For the most of the book, you feel fascinated and engaged with this story about this dude and like all of these weird things that subsequently just keep happening. And there, there are these tiny little pieces of this puzzle that are just locking themselves in one at a time. And so you're trying to like piece it all together. For me, there was a part about 60 to 70% of the way through that was like legging right up until like the climax of the novel which is famously as i'm sure you know quite graphic quite fucked up it goes like in a lot of different directions ways that you didn't think were actually gonna happen <laughs> in terms though of like haunting in terms of spookiness this is kind of spooky it's really spooky it's not scary but it is creepy certainly there were a few moments where i felt <laughs> i felt a little bit like Ooh. You know, <laughs> the main character and his wife are beautifully done. All of the other supporting characters are also really, really well done, especially Lewis. I really, really enjoyed every scene that had Lewis in it. I really, really enjoyed this. I didn't love it. It's not my favorite, but I really, really liked it. And I would recommend that you pick it up because I think it's a good take on like a haunted ghosty type story. Just go into it expecting it to be more of like a slow burn. If you go into it expecting like this fast paced thing, you're, you're going to be very disappointed. But for a slow burn with like a crazy explosive ending, gorgeous. Next, I have Earthlings by, I think, Sayada Murica. I don't have this in physical form. Earthlings is about a young girl who grows up and believes that she is, I think, from a different planet. And her and her cousin are very much like misfits and something happens that changes their lives forever. I can't say too much because giving too much away, I think, ruins the book. I think if you go into this very blind, it surprises you, like in a good way. Now, we started reading it having very little idea about what it was actually about. And then when I got to certain parts, just being shocked at how far this book was going. Because you, you see the cover, which is this adorable fucking hedgehog. And you think, oh, it's going to be something sweet, something cute. We can't wait for it to read it. And then you get into it and it's actually quite, it's actually quite dark. All I can say really is that I really, really fuck with this book. I really loved the way that the author uses trauma and how children and adults deal with trauma. I basically loved the plot and I loved the characters. It goes in a lot of strange directions, but I think if you keep like an open mind about it, but I think you'll like it. I think you will. I did read uh, this author's other book, Convenience Store Woman. And while Convenience Store Woman isn't necessarily like lighthearted, this book in comparison is like a step even further into the darker aspects of life, kind of. It's, a, I can't even describe it. I can't even describe it. All I'm gonna say is I think you should read it. I think it's really good and it's a lot of fun. The second to last book that I'm gonna talk about and my second favorite book of the month, <laughs> surprisingly, was not a horror novel, was not uh, what I expected to love and adore, and yet here we are. Who am I? 
I'm talking about Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a slice of life romance novel following a girl whose father has just died. Her father left her this cabin and she realizes or is told after his death that he had an affair. He lived in this cabin with his mistress and so she's like whoa I didn't even know my dad. What the fuck is even happening? And then to top it all off put the cherry on the sundae this dude named Augustus who she went to college with and was her rival lives next door. Basically they come up with a bargain with a deal that the other can't write in the opposite genre. She writes romance novels, he writes literary fiction, they switch genres, whoever can get their book published first wins. Listen, you know me as the woman, as the girl that hates romance, that doesn't like romance. I don't want romance in my books, like at all, I'm not interested. And yet I have this, and yet I have this fucking book like I read I read this for the bias breaker readathon which I completely forgot to fucking mention it broke my bias it literally broke my fucking bias and I don't know how to feel about that <laughs> because honestly I liked shitting on romance I liked being bitter about romance and now who am I you know now what else do I have besides the girl that likes creepy shit you know like what else do I have besides uncultured swine of booktube? <sighs> it's just disappointing. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> I really, really fucking liked this. I really, really, really liked this. I binged it because it's just so, it's just so easy to read and so fun and like, oh my God, kind of hot also. <sighs> I don't know. Am I, am I trash for a romance novel? I don't know. I think I might be. I'm, I'm both disappointed in myself and yet not at all because I really, really fuck with it and I really enjoyed it. And no, I'm not going to become a romance channel. That's like not my deal. That's not what I'm about. But I might give other romance a try. Maybe. We'll see. Who am I anymore? I'm not even myself. I'm really not. I changed. I'm a different person now. I'm fancy. It's like no big deal. The last book besides the manga and my favorite book of the month was Tender is the Flesh. I don't know where my copy is. I can't find it. So I'll put like a little image of it. Holy fuck balls shit. What in the name of Lucifer did this woman create and put out into the world? Because holy fuck, if it isn't the most nihilistic, pessimistic, and yet realistic thing I've ever written, <laughs> the most realistic thing I've ever read then I don't know I don't know this is about a distant future where we can no longer eat animals and so instead we start eating humans basically we start creating humans so that we can eat them and it's about this dude who works in one of the factories and like I guess his journey or whatever when I got to the ending of this book I felt so gutted and like hollowed out you know like those moments where like you see something or watch something or you read something and it's so like profoundly awful and sad that it makes you confront like a part of yourself that you didn't really see before and so like by the end of it you're just staring at like your mirrored reflection but instead of like you it's like this month <laughs> it got deep for me it's gorgeous it's awful, completely disgusting. I both loved the experience of reading it and hated it completely. The roller coaster of emotions that I had during the whole thing, because you start the book and they're basically pushing you into these scenarios and these situations that you like don't want to see, you don't want to know about. It's like forcing you to look at it, forcing you to be a part of it. And then by the end of it, they've trapped you and you can't get out. So witnessed the most awful, horrendous, heinous shit, like SVU type shit. I really, really liked it. It was really, really fucked up. I cannot recommend it to you more. You need to read it if you haven't already. I'm considering going vegetarian. <laughs> I'm not the same person that I was before I read it. I'm a different person now. 
more cultured, I guess you could say. <laughs> I'm more fancy, it's like no big deal. I just have like a nice setup, so it's like no big deal. It's like whatever. But I would also recommend that you read it if you're in a good headspace or like in an okay headspace. Don't go, don't read this book if you're depressed or something because holy fuck, I can't even imagine what the, what the fuck it would do to you if you were, oh. Let's move on. Those are all of the novels that I read in December. I want to talk really quickly about the manga I read. If you're not interested, then like, bye, see you later. Don't forget to hit subscribe or whatever. I spent Christmas with a friend and her family. This friend has this giant, gorgeous manga collection. And rather than reading the books I brought with me, rather than reading whatever else I had with me, I just read her manga instead. <laughs> It opened something inside of me. I'm thinking about getting more into manga. And by thinking, I mean, I already am. That's who I am now. Again, don't worry. This channel isn't gonna become a manga channel. It's still gonna be a horror channel. Now, I retain the right to change my interests every now and again, you know? Anyway, so I read volumes one to four of Sweat and Soap. This is like a, this is like a romance a smut kind of manga. It's really cute and really hot. It's about a girl who is quite sweaty. She sweats a lot. Throughout the day she has to like clean herself up because she's very self-conscious about it. And there's this dude who like smells her because he has like a good nose. He's like, I'm gonna smell you all the fucking time. It's their relationship and it is the cutest thing in the world. It sounds weird because it's like a smell fetish thing but it's so good. Kind of like, it's kind of like sexy. There's like sex scenes or whatever. I really, really fucked with it. And I have volume five right, right here. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one as well. We'll get to that in January. The other manga that I read was Honey So Sweet, volumes one and two. Basically, I read these when I was on my way back from her place. And they're just another, just like another cutesy romance, except this time we're following two people who are in high school and the girl is in love with her, I think her uncle or something, who's quite old because she's like in high school, like I said. She's in love with her uncle, but then she meets this boy and he gives her flowers. She basically agrees to be his girlfriend because she's afraid of him because she thinks that he's like some kind of criminal delinquent, but he's just like a really sweet, scary looking person. It was just sweet. It was just really cute. I really liked it. I'm a new person. This is the new me. <laughs> Do you hate it? Good. <laughs> Those are all of the books that I read in December. I'm so sorry that this video is so fucking late. I am literally still trash. Listen, you can, you can clean me up. You can dress me up, but you still can't fucking take me out, bitch. You can't. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought, if you agree or disagree with me. Let me know uh, what you thought of Tender as the Flesh if you've read it. Let me know if it destroyed your life as well. I would love to know. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about being fancy and shit here. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next one. Bye.